What's going on guys? Nemesis here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a matchup guide with Pekka Magic Archer Fireball Variation. And um, I pushed up to 2535 uh, medals, so 973 in the world right now. Nothing too crazy, but I'm going to do a little bit more pushing tonight. And like I said, I'm just going to share some replays and basically tell you guys how to beat certain matchups. So without further ado, please make sure to like and subscribe. And let's get straight into it. Okay, so we've got our first game here, and um, as you can see, this is basically where I was around like 2300 medals instead of 2500, so this is kind of like the beginning of my push, and this guy's playing Giant Double Prince, but he's playing Phoenix instead of Mega Minion. Um, I don't know how to feel about that, to be honest with you, because <clears throat> I don't know if that's worse or better for me. I feel like I can't really say if it is worse or better. Maybe worse because Phoenix is Phoenix. Obviously, it just does Phoenix things. It's just super broken. Um, I wouldn't say it's broken anymore, but it's still a very strong card. Um, especially as opposed to Mega Minion. For one more elixir, it definitely is a lot better than the Mega Minion. So, I'm going to tell you guys how to beat this matchup. And, uh, yeah, so he's going to go for a Prince in the back here. And at this point in time... They always do that play, like, they'll tend to fireball the Ewiz into the Prince, which is, like, it's a pretty good play, obviously, because you're kind of forced to spend a bit more Elixir. Um, but what I try to do is always play, like, the Magic Archers in the middle, but higher up, so, like, you can't prevent uh, fireball value. Um, obviously, I played it lower here because he just used fireball, so he can't even just destroy my Magic Archer. It was just a better play. Uh, but yeah, if he has Fireball in hand and you want to play Magic Archer, just kind of play a little bit higher up just to prevent kind of like any value on your tower with like their Fireballs and stuff like that. I think I go for my Electro Wizard here. And like a really big tip I tell my uh, like the people is try to get a good counter pushing Electro Wizard because counter pushing Electro Wizards are really good in this matchup because it obviously takes care of the Phoenix or the Mega Minion depending on which variation. It also stuns the Princes and stuff like that. So, like, Ewiz gets a lot of value in this matchup. So, if you protect your Ewiz a lot and then you get a counter push off it, it's, like, really good. That's, like, the only good way to formulate a push in this matchup. And, uh, yeah. So, with that being said, I go for Bandit right here. And, uh, let's see what I do here. Uh, maybe Magic Archer? Yeah, I kind of Magic Archer high right there. So, he can't get, like, Fireball value. Um, let's see here. I think at this point in time... Let's see, I think I go for okay, I go for Ewiz. I probably just yeah, I probably just pressure up again because I had a, a free ghost on the map and stuff like that. Uh, also, it's pretty important to uh, if they go for a really big Pekka or not a Pekka, if they go for a really big giant push in the back, you obviously want to Pekka the back same lane, and you also want to battle ram in front of the Pekka and stuff like that if they make a really big push because if they have a really big push that way with like. A giant and then like two princes in the back with like a phoenix typically this only happens in like double or triple elixir but when a push that big happens you want to battle ram in front of your pekka just due to the fact that you need your pekka to have as much health as possible to get as much value as possible because your pekka is like your only way to defend against pushes that big and also when you play a battle ram like that to defend for your pekka you also want to play a ghost high uh so it could splash on the prince and the dark prince simultaneously and that is like the quickest and easiest way to defend really big pushes that way um so yeah i go for a pekka right here because i'm down in a or i'm down in damage and i already had a bandit coming down the lane so he had to respond to it and uh this is basically what i have to do now so yeah i go for bad ram over here i think i bait the fireball out yeah i bait the fireball out. it's totally fine um and I take a really nice zap here because I need to get as much value from this uh, P.E.K.K.A. as possible. And it just takes care of that um, E.W.I.S. super nicely. I go for a P.E.K.K.A. because I know he's going to try to hit my E.W.I.S. with it. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm trying to like use that Ghost to splash on both the Princes. And look at this massive counter push I have now. So I think I go for Magic Archer right here. Yeah, Magic Archer high as per usual right here. And I think I go for E.W.I.S. off to the... Yeah, right there. And this is really nice. Okay, this is bad on his end. So he uses a fireball. Now he doesn't have a fireball for like this really big push I'm trying to formulate right now. So I'm just going to kind of keep up the pressure right now. And this is looking super, super solid. Um, I think I go for, let me see, a magic archer again. I take a zap because I need to get as much damage as possible. Just destroy that dark prince. Go for E was high so we can't get fireball value on top of my uh, tower. 
And uh, yeah, this is looking super good so far. Let's see here. I go for Pekka because obviously it's just to clog the lane. There's only 24 seconds left on the, on the clock. So like he can't just giant in front of this. I think he might giant in front of this still. But uh, yeah, there's really nothing he can do anymore. I'm just going to try to keep up some pressure. I, I keep the e in hand obviously for the minor because it's pretty important. And this is basically just stalling out at this point. Uh, really, really well played. Honestly, this matchup, it's, it's kind of even. Honestly, it's kind of an even matchup. It's whoever plays better. So, yeah, let's go ahead and jump to the next game. We got our next game here against Prince, and he's going to be playing Splash Yard. So, he has, like, <clears throat> the Skeleton King, uh, Tombstone. You know, obviously, you know what Splash Yard is. So, uh, yeah, this very iconic deck. And, basically, I'm going to show you how to beat this matchup using this particular variation. I think, I, yeah, I stall a little bit. But now I play the Ghost. And let's see what he does. He goes for a tombstone. I think I just go for a magic archer in the middle. I think I could have played it just a little bit higher just to snipe the tombstone, but I kind of mess it up. But it doesn't matter. He just goes for poison anyway. And at this point in time, I already know this guy's splash yard because he has the poison, the barbarian barrel. So it's like, okay, like it kind of makes sense. This guy is splash yard and nothing really else. So at this point in time, I go for a Pekka in front of this because uh, if I didn't Pekka, he would get a tombstone or not a tombstone. He would get a tornado. On top of my bandit for his king tower and there's basically no way i could break through anymore after that i think i take a zap right here just to bait out something else so yeah i bait the tombstone out but yeah so i played it and also he didn't have a tombstone in rotation at the time as well so that peko is actually pretty nice and look at his hand it's literally all spells because he just used the tombstone like i just baited out the tombstone he just used baby dragon and like look at his hand it's just kind of terrible so what i do here is i just spam him like crazy i'm pretty sure yeah he goes for an ice wizard i just go for ghost bataram <clears throat> i don't really play anything else just in case but i know this is gonna be really good he just i don't know what he does here he kind of just freezes up or something like um he could have definitely defended this but he would have still took a lot of damage i feel like probably bringing this tower down to like at least 2500 or 2000 or something like that but he kind of just freezes up for some reason i don't know why maybe it's because he like had all spells in his hand or something and he didn't really know what to do but um i go for a peck on top of this thing right here and i think i take a uh a zap on top of this uh this graveyard right here which is really nice <clears throat> and then i just let this uh skeleton king ability go but a uh, really important tip, obviously, is just to kind of fireball the tombstones. I'll try to find your opening in single elixir. Try to get a really big damage in single elixir because that's the only way you're going to break through. If you're just going to leave that tombstone unintended, you're not going to break through whatsoever. So you got to find a way to just take the tombstone off the board and basically just kind of go in after that. Use this bandage just to protect against this baby dragon and just play e -Wiz as well. Also important in this matchup, if they go aggressive... Like this, you want to just battle ram kite the skeleton king. You want to magic archer low. The reason why you magic archer low is because it kind of makes them hesitate to play a poison. Because look at where the magic archer is. They don't really want to poison that right there because it's literally next to the king tower. And obviously, um, obviously if they poison the king tower when they're playing graveyard, they're just not going to break through anymore. So yeah, uh, I kind of messed up my defense a little bit right there. Not going to lie by playing the um, like zap and stuff. I think I just fireballed everything. But, uh, yeah, nonetheless, really good game right there. Let's go ahead and jump to the next one. Okay, so we've got our next game here. And this is kind of where I'm getting a little bit more higher up on the leaderboards. And this guy's uh, Kevin. He's playing Bomb Tower, Minor Wall Breakers with, like, Valkyrie, NATO. I'm sure you guys know what this deck is, too. It's pretty popular, I would say. I think I go for Magic Archer Low right here. Um, in this matchup, obviously, since he only has Tornado, you could you could try to abuse Magic Archers as much as you can. Um, try to protect them from the Miners and stuff like that. I think it's a pretty good play for sure. Also, what you can do is you can um, basically just play P.E.K.K.A.s and Single Elixir as well if they have a really bad cycle. Because they don't really have anything to pressure you. Like if they cycle, um, if they cycle Wall Breakers and you defend with Wall Breakers. Um, or you defend a Ghost. What am I trying to say? If you defend the wall breakers with the ghost, that's what I'm trying to say. You could kind of just peck up afterwards because they really don't have anything good. But that's like I said, if they have a bad cycle, um, they're more likely than not try to tornado you after that like this. But what you got to do afterwards is you got to pressure with the ghost so they don't get free uh, king activation. Because he, uh, he's probably trying to get the king activation with the tornado right there. But I played a bad ramp, so it's kind of forcing him to not play the tornado. Uh, I think I take a zap right here. And uh, yeah... 
At this point, I think I just go for Bandit right here for the Wall Breakers, and this is mm, not too bad right now. It's a pretty solid push, so yeah. It's okay to play Pekka's and Single Elixir for sure. If they have a bad cycle, they can't really punish you for it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it right there. Um, I think right here, I might just go for another... I think I go for Magic Archer in the back, uh, because he can't really deal with Magic Archers. I might go for Magic Archer or Pekka. Let me see what I do. I think I go for Magic Archer. Yeah, I do go for the Magic Archer because, like I said, he doesn't have a Fireball. He doesn't have a Poison, so really nothing he can do here. Um, so super solid play. And I think I go for Pekka the Bridge because these guys, they will tend to always Tornado the Magic Archer into the Valkyrie. So I tried to predict that, but it didn't work. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. He goes for a really nice Magic Archer right there. Like super solid plays on his end right there. And I think he goes for Wall Breakers. So with that being said, I just go for a Zap. And I think I go for a Bandit as well. Uh, important to dual lane push in this matchup, obviously, because he has a Bomb Tower. You don't want to stack everything into one lane. His Bomb Tower, his Valkyrie. So, like, dual lane pushing to kind of make him pick a lane is definitely the, the play in this matchup. Also, I think I go for Pekka on top of this Magic Archer right here just to get it out the way. And, uh, yeah, I think I try to go for a Battle Ram right here. But this is what I was trying to talk to you guys about. Um, I kind of played that late. Oh, he actually didn't get the King Activation. Um... But yeah, yeah, I tried to do that obviously because I didn't want him to get the king activation. It's super important. It's kind of like splash yard in a sense that like if they get king activation in this matchup, you're gonna lose. Like there's no way because they'll just stack everything in the middle, and then all the three towers will just start shooting, and then like your troops are just like go down instantaneously. So very important to prevent any king activation in this matchup. It's not like Golem where like you can still break through if they have king activation. But yeah, this matchup definitely try to prevent that. I think I go for Batarim opposite lane here. Yeah, I go for Batarim opposite lane. I go for a really nice Fireball on top of the Valkyrie and the Magic Archer. So super solid plays right there. I go for a Magic Archer right here. And uh, I think I protect this thing too, because it's important because he, like I said, he doesn't have a spell, so pretty important. Um, I think I go for Ghost right there. And I might just roll another P.E.K.K.A. in the back. Okay, no I don't. I go for Batarim right here. Look at the Magic Archer getting some good damage right there. And uh, yeah, look at this Royal Ghost as well. This is really good on my end. He plays a Miner, but the Ghost is still splashing, and I know I have a really big Elixir advantage, so I go for another P.E.K.K.A. in the back here. And I think he goes for a Magic Archer, so I take a really nice Fireball just to get it out the way. Or get... Oh my gosh, I talk so fast right there. To get that thing out the way. That's what I'm trying to say. I go for Bandit opposite lane, obviously, for some dueling pressuring. Magic Archer in the middle. Really good play. Go for Batarim right there. And I think I go for Electro Wizard here. In Triple Elixir, this matchup is actually extremely easy because you have so much spam. Pekka gets a lot of value in Triple Elixir. You can just build really big dueling pushes. But uh, in Double and Single Elixir, it's definitely a lot harder. So yeah, uh, let's see here. I go for a Fireball because I don't want anything to do with that Magic Archer. And I go for a Bad Ram. And this is basically where I just try to absolutely destroy this guy by just getting a really massive counter push right here. So I go for like... I go for a bandit right here, I go for ghost on the right side right here, right, and I just spam him. I literally put the pressure on, he can't do anything about it, um, and I think he, at this point he just gives up. Yeah, there it is, he just gives up. So that's how I like to take care of that matchup. It's important to really control the tempo of the game in this matchup, extremely important. But that's going to wrap up this video, thank you guys so much for watching, I'll do more in the future.